How's it going guys? I'm Jack and in this video I'll be showing you my top 10 tips to help you beat Frostpunk on the edge. We'll be covering resource management and gathering, exploring the Frostland, settlements and a bunch of other things as well. If you do enjoy city building, simulation and management games, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Also hit the like button if this does help you out at all. I also live stream over on Twitch every Sunday and Monday. The link to my channel is in the description. But without further ado, let's get into it. So, tip number one, it's the very start of the game. What we want to do is send out scouts as soon as we can, and that means right now. You're going to get a lot of resources, you're going to get new workers, uh, and you really want to explore the whole map as quickly as possible. Uh, as you can see here, we need 40 wood to send out our first scout team. We've only got 30 at the moment, uh, so what we're going to do is come down here and delete this road for an extra 10 wood. We can delete these roads as well. Uh, to give us a little bit extra, uh, but you only need to delete that one road, um, and that's give us uh, going to give us enough wood for the scouts. So we're going to create those, send them over to remnants of a building first, and then after that is going to be Nansen's storm watch. Uh, that's where your first survivors are going to be, and escort them back, and that's going to set you up really nicely uh, with a bunch of new workers and setting out on exploring the whole map as quickly as possible. Tip number two, at the very start of the game, you may be tempted to place a gathering post over here to collect all these steel ruins and wooden ruins. Uh, they conveniently fit all in uh, one circle. However, I'm going to say don't do that and focus on the uh, resource piles over here. I've found that it's uh, possible to deplete these three wooden uh, crates and this steel wreckage before the temperature drops. Uh, to minus 30. Uh, there's a couple of reasons we want to do this. So um, the colder it is, the more likely people will get sick on uh, working on the open resource deposits. So anything below minus 20 is basically unacceptable and it's going to overflow your medical centers and your medical tents um, if you have people working on there in anything colder than minus 20. Also, uh, it gives you a little bit more room to build if you deplete these resource uh, deposits as well. As uh, You can put a sawmill in this position to grab those trees there. You can build some houses around here. Uh, but over here, this um, uh, little area here, it's not really useful for anything really. It's quite far away from the center circle. Uh, so um, there's no point building anything over here at the start. So focus on the resource deposits first and then collect all this stuff over here if you want to see my full starting strategy there's a video on my channel uh, go check that out I think it's uh, very important to get a good start to this scenario like all the scenarios uh, that's going to set you up very well for the mid game and the late game uh, so go check that out on my channel tip number three new London needs to sign laws for us at the very beginning of the game as you can see we can't actually sign any of these laws now they've already signed emergency shift for us but we want to get extended shift um, so what we're gonna do here don't worry about sending the first shipment out um, at the moment and then this will happen they'll give you a message uh, and say uh, why haven't you dispatched the uh, steel and steam cores uh, you just go understood and they will sign the extended shift for you uh, so that's absolutely amazing also we can do a couple of other things as well um, if we've got ill people we can actually uh, wait for one to get gravely ill and then ask them to sign a law dealing with that um, which is uh, they'll probably sign a radical treatment I haven't seen them uh, sign anything other than radical treatment if someone becomes gravely ill um, but my f uh, by far my favorite one uh, is putting everything onto extended shift uh, once we can do that and trying to raise the discontent as high as possible oh so you're gonna put everything on uh, extended shift when we get it and um, the discontents a little bit high now so we can click on the administration building communicate say so have some problems and then it gives us an option to say address the growing discontent click that and they will sign a law for you either public house or fighting arena let's see what we get we get fighting uh, fighting arena fighting arena or pub is or very useful anyway uh, but yeah we can kind of manipulate uh, them signing laws like that um, so yeah if you have a problem just click on the administration building click communicate and then have some problems and can and they can help you out by signing the laws absolutely fantastic 
Tip number four, I really like to unlock straddle carriers as quickly as possible. This is an army warehouse upgrade that lets you collect steel more efficiently. So the army warehouse is really the only reliable source of steel in the whole scenario. Yeah, you can get some from the Frostland, but it's not enough to do what you want in the scenario. You need steel, you need a lot of steel to trade with the settlements later in the game. So hand carts gives you an extra 20% efficiency, freight elevators gives you another 15, and then the straddle carriers gives you an extra 15 on top of that. So you put that all together, that should give you a 150% efficiency on gathering steel, which is invaluable. So tip number five, this is all gonna be about food. At the very beginning, you don't actually need to build a cookhouse until about day three or four. Uh, as you can see, it's just coming to day four and our people are only just about to get hungry. So I'm going to put down a cookhouse now um, and that's going to save us three days worth of food. So people will eat one uh, food ration per day, um, but we only need to feed them when they're really hungry. Uh, so. That's a uh, good tip just to save you three days worth of food rations at the very beginning. Also, when it's built at the very start, uh, you don't need the maximum five workers in there. Two is more than enough to feed everyone. So another thing that's really going to help with the food situation is focusing your efforts on establishing the safe route to hot springs first. Uh, we're just going to finish this safe route here. What this is going to do is going to let uh, hot springs get to your... Uh, outpost e uh, more easily and they can send more food uh, so there you go the safe route has been established and now they're gonna say we are gonna send you food every other day and it actually is a, a lot of food we look up here it's 50 raw food every two days combine that with the soup law and you're gonna have more than enough food to last you for the rest of the scenario Tip number six, scouts will always travel faster to places they've already been. So if you want to go to a new location, always look for somewhere you've already been to that is pretty close. It's going to save a lot of time. So for example, we've got these scouts over here. We want to send them to the sturdy shelter. That's going to take one day and 24 hours to arrive. However, if we send them over to the steel bridge first, that's only going to take 23 hours to get to there. And then from the steel bridge to the sturdy shower, that's going to take only 10 hours. So that's saved half a day just in that little trip. And over the course of the game, exploring everything, you can use that trick to save a good few days over the whole course of, uh, of the scenario. Also, with regards to researching the upgrades for the scouts, you only really need more scouts and lighter scout sleds to explore everywhere. I managed to do it in about 22 days uh, just with the more scouts and the lighter scout sleds. Tip number seven, ignore the heating page on the tech tree until about day seven or eight. As you can see, uh, we can survive pretty well up to minus 30. Anything lower than that, it gets a bit risky and the temperature only drops to minus 40 at around day 10. Uh, so yeah, we're on day seven at the moment, so we're gonna start up the research on the braziers there. Um, you should be able to cope with the amount of sick people that minus 30 gives you by building more medical posts and bringing the engineers back from the wasteland. Uh, so if you've been exploring the wasteland with the previous tips, um, then you should have enough engineers to actually do that. And once you're on top of the sick, then it becomes very easy to maintain just two medical posts uh, with all the heating and stuff. So ignore the heating for the first week. It gives you valuable time to research other things. Tip number eight, I'm not going to lie. This is a bit of a cop-out tip. <laughs> um, I wrote it down thinking it's going to be more useful than it was. Uh, but it's, uh, it's still good to know. Um, it's just common sense, really. The army warehouse needs to be switched between uh, the steel and the steam cores whenever uh, you want to start collecting both. You can actually uh, unlock a upgrade that does them both at the same time called Mixed Cruise. However, I really don't think that's necessary. You can use that research time to unlock something else. Um, so when you are switching over from steam cores to steel or the other way around always do it when the shift is not working that's going to give you maximum efficiency it is only 15 minutes game time to switch over which is not a lot but if you want to do maximum production 
uh, then do it when the shift is not on. Again, I don't think that's very useful, uh, but it's good to know. Tip number nine, wooden supports are very useful and I try to use them every single day. There's a few things to take into account to use them properly and to get the most efficiency out of them. So they boost efficiency by 50% for 12 hours. However, it has a 24 hour cooldown on them. This means you can only use them once per day. They are most effective use at the start of a shift with extended shift on. So I use them between six and eight in the morning. It's six o'clock now, so I'm gonna whack those wooden supports on. That gives us an efficiency boost of 200% uh, with all the workforce equipment as well, which is actually incredible. Uh, and that is gonna give us the most amount of steel that we can get in that day. If we used it later in the day, for example, at four o'clock, we would only get the 50% boost from four till eight, which is only four hours. And then um, after 12 hours, so four o'clock in the morning, the efficiency boost would wear off and then we wouldn't be able to use the wooden supports again until four o'clock in the afternoon. So you've wasted the whole morning of efficiency boost. So extended shift on, use it between six and eight o'clock in the morning. And that's how to get the most out of your wooden supports. And finally, tip number 10, when upgrading your settlements, focus on shipwreck camp and hot springs. They are way more useful than the children's mine. Sorry kids, your coal's just not that valuable around here. <laughs> As you can see, we've got one coal thumper and two gathering posts, and that's given us a ton of coal. Uh, however, hot springs will give you food and shipwreck camp will give you all the building materials you need. Uh, so focus your efforts on those two. Also, they don't need to be at level five in order to become loyal to you. Just make sure you're choosing the option when they uh, communicate with you, uh, the option that makes them pleased and that's how you get them to become loyal to you and fulfill the final objectives for you. So there we have it guys. Those are my 10 tips for surviving Frostpunk on the edge. Hopefully this did help you out. If it did, please leave a like on the video. It really helps out the channel. Any questions, suggestions or comments, leave them down in the comment section below. If you do enjoy city building, simulation and management games like this, then be sure to subscribe. I also live stream over on Twitch every Sunday and Monday. The link to my channel is in the description. But as always, stay safe, have fun and I'll see you on the next one.